Hey everybody, it's Monday night and I recently had one of my viewers uh, remind me gently that I've been shooting an awful lot of videos of my native tank lately. Uh, I will admit that I have been. I'm a little obsessed with that tank right now. I'm just in love with it. So I promised them that the very next video I shot was going to be something other than my native tank and I thought what better video than an around the world update which will give you most of my tanks. I don't include the tanks I have upstairs in these videos uh, but we will go around my fish room and look at each and every one of my tanks and I promise we'll skim over my native tank fairly briefly. I've got lots of videos of that if you want to see it. So this is my 29 miscellaneous, not really anything going on in there to mention. So I did uh, add a couple of little plants down in the bottom. I did a water change and some plant removal in the next tank we're going to look at, my Garami tank. And some of the plants that were in there, I just sort of snipped the tops of them off, those little temple plants you see down there in the bottom. And there was one floating little piece of java that I wedged between the rocks back there. You can see those loaches by it. And that's all I've really done to this tank. My Garami tank. This tank had a lot of work done to it recently. I got in there and did a fairly major water change, probably about a 40 to 50 percent. But the real thing I did was get in there and really, really cleaned out a lot of the floating water sprite that's in the top left. And I thinned that out uh, enough that it really let a lot more light through. But I also went in and over here where you can see this uh, clown loach on the left is much more open now because down on the rocks and the wood down here was uh, a lot of java fern. I took this group or this little clump right here and cut a big chunk of it out and that really opened up this side of the tank much much more and you can see in there a lot better now. I also cut the top of that temple plant off right there uh, this plant here in the middle you can see where I chopped the top of it and then I also thinned out my red tiger lotus my water lily in there a great deal you don't think they're waiting for dinner or anything do you these fish are worse than puppy dogs when it comes to me walking up near the tank they think they're getting food it is just about dinner time for them so I guess no blame to them so moving along, my angelfish tank, I've not really done anything uh, to this tank that I can think of this week. I still need to get in there and thin out some of the Anubias. Um, I don't think they've spawned any time in the recent uh, last week or so. And I haven't gotten in there and done any water changes or anything like that. I did have my male cherry barb die. I shot a video a few days ago and I inadvertently called it my tiger barb because I was thinking of the tiger barbs that I've had die in the next tank we're going to look at, my black ghost knifefish tank. Uh, I haven't lost a few of the tiger barbs in there but I did lose the cherry barb that was in this tank. I've had a female in this tank for several years now and I finally got my male out of quarantine and put it in this tank and it was in here for I don't know maybe a month or something and everything looked fine and then all of a sudden everything didn't. It was swimming around in circles up near the top of the tank and very clearly not doing well. So that was the last I saw of it. When I came down the next morning, assuming it was going to be floating in the tank, uh, I've not seen it since. So I pointed out in the other video I shot that a fish that small in a tank this size with uh, you know, the bio load capacity that I have in this tank. This tank can handle quite a bit of bio load. So one small fish rotting away is not necessarily a good thing in the tank, but it's also not going to blow up my nitrogen cycle. I'm not going to have a huge ammonia spike in there or anything like that. So if I do come across it or if I did see it, I certainly would have gotten it out of there, but it's nothing that I'm going to get in there and tear the tank apart trying to find one small fish. So other than that, not a lot going on. Again, I am going to get in here really soon. If you look back here, you'll see the Anubius has all these little uh, babies growing up off of the log back there. And I can get back in there and break every one of those little babies off. And it'll help open up the tank a little bit. And it will also give me Anubius that I can move around to other plants. This is all one plant. From here, all of this, all this Anubius is all part of the same plant. And I even had some of it broken off that I put down here in the rocks. 
and I've eventually moved that to a different tank too. But that's all one piece of Anubius that I originally bought when I set this tank up uh, a few years ago, and it's just been in there growing like that ever since. I also have my power head that I removed from my native tank. Uh, it's an 850 gallon per hour power head, and I'm going to put it in this tank eventually. I want to sterilize it uh, before I put it in this tank. I don't know why because all it's got on it is the uh, green cyanobacteria and this tank has already got plenty of green cyanobacteria in it so it's not like I'm going to be introducing something that's not already in this tank but it's just kind of habit even though it's not going to make a whole lot of difference I'll go ahead and sterilize the um, power head before we put it in this tank so look forward to that there will be some video coming up of me doing a little bit of work on this tank we're going to change the power head over and maybe increase the circulation in this tank a little bit and see what happens my black ghost knife fish tank uh, this tank has had a little bit of work done to it in the way of some fish being added I took my mollies out of my native tank uh, one of the things I did in my native tank this week and you can see the white one right there in the front that's actually a silver molly and somewhere in there is the um, Dalmatian I know it looks like a black molly but it really is a Dalmatian it's just got very little uh, white on it you can hardly see it and he's actually in the back there swimming around not sure what he's doing back there by himself he's almost always with the other molly I uh, did get some new food for this tank and I'm waiting to find out whether or not it's going to be uh, something that the black ghost knife fish really likes or not it might take a little bit of uh, effort for me to get it in there in a way that will get it to the black ghost knife fish so that's something we'll be looking forward to here in the fairly near future as well I did get a request from somebody uh, to go over all the various foods that I put in my different tanks and my different fish and all that so while I'm probably not going to go around and say in this tank I put this that and the other thing uh, I may lay out all my different uh, foods and food items that I put in the various tanks and we'll go over them because I do put quite a variety of foods in my different tanks. Every tank it's, you know, gets a variety of food, um, not only because of the fish in there, but I believe that the fish, you know, each individual fish should get a variety of food. So I usually do mix it up quite a bit when I go around making my rounds of uh, feeding, which I do once a day. I uh, make sure I mix it up and everybody gets a little bit of different stuff uh, to meet the nutritional needs of all the different fish. So that's really about all that's going on in there. Uh, I was wondering whether I was going to ever be in full focus or not. So that is my Black Ghost Knife Fish. Again, not a lot going on in there. One of these days we will get to see my Black Ghost Knife Fish. Maybe I'll just set the camera up and walk away with some food in there. And, you know, if it takes an hour or two and I finally get two minutes of... Uh, video I can put together we'll see if we can't do something like that or whatever who knows my native tank as I said I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this because I've shot about five videos in the last two days if you are interested in my native tank you can check out the playlist and look at the different uh, videos I've shot the long and short is I've added a bluegill which is back there giving us a great big yawn and I've also added a green sunfish which is right here probably my new favorite fish in the tank is this green sunfish I have also added another bluegill that lasted less than 24 hours it was being so harassed by the big one we just looked at I removed him from the tank today and gave him to uh, one of my customers has a pond and I put it in the pond uh, to help stock that up other than that not a lot going on in here I still have to get the two uh, fish this one and this one these two here are the tilapia and the Mayan cichlid and they need to get removed from this tank as well but I'm going to do that on a day that I'm going to be getting down to my uh, good fish store I'll take them down there and I'll sell them and then that'll be the only fish remaining that really need to come out that aren't really native fish that were just sort of temporary fish over the winter and once I get them out of there uh, we'll be up to a uh, full native tank this little fish here I do believe is a warmouth now 
and I've got it eating both flake and uh, blood worms. So I think this little guy is going to be okay. And even though he's not very attractive, uh, just the effort I've put into getting him to eat and everything, I feel like I've got a little bit of investment in this fish now. So this one's probably going to be a long-term inhabitant and stay in the tank because he's kind of a cool little guy. So there you go. Like I said, if you want any other uh, video, uh, there's my 1500 gallon per hour power head. That's the other thing I did this week. And if you want video on any of that stuff more specifically, you can check out the native tank playlist and see what's going on in there. My snail tank is nothing new going on in here. Uh, I am still sort of on the fence about whether or not to take the ram's horn snails that are in this tank and throw them in the native tank because I've got uh, darters in there that will eat snails, but the ram's horn are really invasive, and if they don't get eaten by the darters, I'll basically be infesting my tank with ram's horn snails, and I don't really want to do that just yet. So I'm waiting to see what happens, and I've got the darters eating blood worms, so I may not have to worry about the snails. We'll see. Uh, I am taking the pond snails that I get in this tank when I come across them because there's both species in there and when I find the pond snails I do pull them out and throw them into the native tank uh, because I'm not worried about having an outbreak of them. They're a native non-invasive snail so we'll see what happens with that. My t-bar and gudgeon tank. I actually did do a little bit of work in here this week. I did uh, pretty big water change and got in there and wiped the glass down but more importantly I removed a lot of the dead plants and dying plants that were already in there the temple plants that weren't doing real well a lot of stuff had uprooted and was floating on the surface a lot of leaves had sort of come off the main bodies of the plants because they were dying and deteriorating so all of that came out and I took some of the excess uh, java that I took out of the garami tank we looked at a while ago. I told you I took, took a huge chunk of java out of there. Well, I chopped it up and cut it into smaller pieces and we put it all through this tank and you may or may not have noticed one of the pieces has already been pulled up and is sitting back there. So I'll have to get in there and re-tuck that. Uh, I basically just have it sort of tucked under the edges of rocks here and there. And I do believe right in here is where that big piece was tucked. And that is where this guy, my T-bar, likes to dig. You can see how cleared out all of the sand is and it's moved over to here. So he probably got in there and knocked it loose and it's just floated up to the surface. That's the main problem I'm having with this tank is, is that T-bar uh, is such a digger it's hard to get anything to stay in the substrate and rooted and you know plants that just get torn up constantly the roots get damaged they just don't do well and they never really settle in so that t-bar is pretty destructive but I think the java is a hardy enough plant that once I get it established a little bit we'll get this to be a nice uh, pretty tank even with that t-bar in there so other than that, nothing really going on here. No plans to change it. Nothing else uh, really going on. I did think about putting those two mollies in this tank for a little while. And then I came to the conclusion that I think that gudgeon would have made a snack of them. Uh, this fish here can can eat a remarkably large fish for its own size. I mean, seriously, it can eat a fish that's damn near as big as he is. Um, when I first put these rainbow fish in there, they were considerably smaller than they are now. And uh, if I can find the video, I'll attach a card. Um, but I lost one of my rainbow fish to that gudgeon, and I could not believe he ate it. I thought he was going to choke to death on it. And I got in there at first and separated them. And then when I came down that night to turn the lights out, I checked again, and sure enough, he had gotten it again. And this time, it wasn't half a fish sticking out of its mouth. It was just the very tip of its tail sticking out of its mouth. So that gudgeon managed to get that whole entire um, rainbow fish down, and he had himself a $13 dinner. <laughs> And I worried about my rainbow fish for quite a while until they got so big that I'm not too worried about them anymore. Those mollies, however, I don't think would have lasted very long before this gudgeon made a snack of them. I think he really would have just eaten those mollies. So if you're thinking about getting a gudgeon, that's great. They're cool fish. I recommend it. But don't even think about putting something in the tank um, that's even, you know, half their size. It better be at least as big as they are or bigger. Uh, or you risk this gudgeon just gobbling it down. They have an immense mouth and a huge appetite. And they're predatory fish. That's what they do. They're ambush predators in the wild, and they eat other fish. 
So, you know, keep that in mind. My 125 gallon tank, nothing really going on in here this week that I can think of. I have actually got in there a little while ago and I never did anything with it. I broke up the main um, body of water sprite and well I didn't break it up so much as I went through it and I separated all the babies off of it and normally I'll go through and I'll clean them all out and I'll throw it all away and just get rid of all the excess and sort of start over and in this case I just sort of broke them all up and spread them all out around the tank and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them yet I may um, get rid of the original mother and start a new one from one of these babies I may just keep a few of them floating around I may probably, what I'll probably wind up doing is just getting rid of them. I also want to shoot a video about this tank one of these days, um, about the plants in this tank, and why I don't have a lot of success with the plants in this tank, because I'm not 100% sure why, to tell you the truth. But I have thoughts on it, and we can do a video uh, chatting about it. This plant here is the top section of the temple plant that we cut out of the Garami tank, uh, with all the uh, java fern and stuff that I removed in there So I have tucked that into the ground in this tank and I'm hoping it'll root in and start growing and we'll have some temple plant But I've done that with quite a few different plants in this tank and they never really seem to take So I'm not sure what's going on there. This is a uh, Can't even think of what it's called now water wisteria So that should be a fairly easy plant to grow as long as it's getting a decent amount of light we should get growth on that but it's certainly not taken off and the other one I planted that even got more light than that is already gone so I think that might be part of my problem right there garamis really like munching on plant material and that is a whole lot of garami right there and has a really big appetite so he's probably about eight inches long maybe nine inches long now um, and this is a snakeskin garami and you know, that could be a lot of what's tearing my plants up. I also have this Cynodontis right here, and a lot of people don't think about Cynodontis being um, plant eaters, but Cynodontis really will do a lot of damage to plants if you give them the opportunity. I know when I put algae wafers in there, the Cynodontis is much more interested in algae wafers than any other kind of food I put in the tank. So I wouldn't put it past him or her to be part of the culprit as to why I have trouble with plants in this tank too. Uh, other than that, nothing really going on. I haven't lost any more of my Congo Tetras. Uh, I also have not added to the school of Congo Tetras like I intend to. I just, I haven't been down my good fish store in months and months and months. So one of these days we will be getting down there. I'll shoot some video when I'm down there. Uh, if I get the opportunity, we're going to get that Mayan cichlid and that tilapia down there and maybe trade it in for a little bit of store credit. And who knows, maybe I'll be able to bring home some Congo Tetras that day uh, to bolster up this school a little bit. But first, I will need to get my quarantine tank emptied and we'll get to that in a few minutes my brackish tank is still just ticking over not really doing anything different with this tank um, butterbean apparently has just noticed me now it's interesting I've taken the case off of my phone so this is the same camera I've been using for a couple years now that he really hates uh, being in front of but now that it's not in the case he doesn't seem to be acting the way he normally does in front of the camera so I'm almost wondering if the purple color on the case was what was putting him off. I don't know. I'm assuming they have color vision, so I guess maybe he doesn't like purple. I don't know. Anyway, nothing going on in this tank. Just trying to let you have a little bit of a look at uh, Butterbean here. Uh, this tank is probably due for a water change pretty soon. So is my uh, Red Claw Crab tank, which is another brackish tank I have. So usually when I do work on one of them, I do work on both since I've got the brackish water reservoir out. And we can shoot some video of that in the near future as well. And we can talk a little bit more about brackish systems and brackish water and brackish water changes and so on and so forth. So this tank just has my figure eight puffer and I've got five bumblebee gobies in there. And I'm not sure if it's still in there actually, but there was a um, ghost shrimp in here for a little while. And I don't see it anymore, so it's entirely possible that Butterbean finally made a snack out of it. So there you go, that's my figure eight puffer Butterbean. Everybody loves Butterbean, he's awesome. 
He's very timid for a figure eight puffer. These fish can be fairly aggressive, not necessarily a rule of thumb, uh, but they can be pretty aggressive. Um, but Butterbean is just mild as milk. He's downright timid for a figure eight puffer. I don't know why, again, I'm having a hard time focusing here. So that is my brackish tank. My quarantine tank, I'm down to a couple of hatchet fish. I have two hatchet fish in here now. I've lost another few. I'm not really sure what was going on with them. See, here's one down here. I threw a cutting of water sprite in there and that's what it's turned into so I probably need to trim that back because the poor hatchet fish can't even get to the surface anymore it's completely covered by this water sprite uh, I still have a few female uh, guppies in there that are pregnant and then I have all these little baby guppies in there that are doing just fine and I've got maybe I don't know eight or ten of them swimming around in there I have no idea uh, what species they are actually now that I'm looking I have some really small ones so somebody else must have given birth uh, wow, I've got a lot of really little tiny small ones in there. So yeah, we've definitely had some more babies being delivered um, in addition to the ones I've already got in there. Wow, I can see them all over the place. There's a bunch of them. So yep, got more guppies coming in. And then there's another one of the hatchet fish swimming around in there. So this is kind of like a quarantine tank, kind of like a tank that I really don't care about. I just kind of let roll over and sort of look at it once in a while because it's got some cool fish in it. But it's technically my quarantine tank and those uh, hatchet fish are supposed to be on their way somewhere else so stay tuned for that last and not least is my move some stuff out of my way here um, this is my red claw crab tank it is a filthy mess it really is in need of a water change and it needs the glass wiped down I need to get in there and replace a lot of the um, plants a lot of the fern I keep calling it fern. Moss uh, has been eaten. It's been knocked down into the water, etc. It's got so much diatom algae growing on the glass that you can barely even see the fish in there. I haven't done a water change in a while, but the water is still clear enough. When you're not looking through the filthy glass, the water is nice and clear. And... I'm probably due for a filter change again. When I had my two crayfish in this tank, I don't think I changed that filter all winter long or however long I had those crayfish in there. And this will now be the third time I've had to get in there and change the filters on this one because they're already so gummed up. You can see how very little water is actually moving through that. So I'll be doing some video on this tank here real soon too. Uh, maybe tomorrow we'll get outside in the yard and I'll collect some various uh, species of moss that I've got growing. I got more moss in my yard than I do grass. I live in a very tree filled area and don't get a lot of sunlight back here. So I've got lots and lots of moss to choose from out in the yard. Uh, and I've got various other like creeping jenny and stuff like that that we can put in here. So hopefully I'll get some video of this coming up real soon. When it's a little cleaner, you'll be able to see some of the crabs in there doing their thing. You can kind of see that one in the corner. He's just sort of rooting through the mud on the bottom. And this is just a fun tank. So I promise I will be getting back to doing uh, other videos. But as I said at the beginning of this one, I've been just infatuated with my um, native tank for the last week or so. And for a little while, we're probably going to be seeing a lot of videos of that one. Uh, and less of my other tanks so bear with me we'll get back to doing my routine after a while but again uh, I am fascinated by my native tank right at the moment so here we are back at my 29 miscellaneous where we started thanks again for watching please subscribe you don't want to miss anything I do have coming up especially my native tank because it's awesome thanks again for watching and I'll see you real soon in the next one